This will be one of our first code related screencasts and what we're going to be taking a look at is refactoring some jQuery code found in a stack overflow question. Since the refactoring of the code had nothing to do with the actual question, um, just wanted to make it a separate thing and provide some information on refactoring in general, why we want to refactor, and things like that. So this is a some jQuery code that uh, works with tooltips, but that isn't actually relevant to the question. We're just going to go through it real quick, function by function, and um, take take a quick look. So the first thing we notice is that the document ready function has another document ready function in it. So this code here is actually the same as this code here. This is a jQuery shortcut. So the first thing we'll do is just get rid of that because it's unnecessary, uh, redundant. Um, one thing I will point out um, at the onset is that this is actually uh, has a couple of high level problems. Um, and the, the first one is that sometimes we're using semicolons like here and sometimes we're not, like here. I've largely switched to a no semicolon style of JavaScript. Um, there are some gotchas with that, uh, mostly around returning objects. Um, if you have a return, if you don't start the uh, object curly brace opening on the same line, you'll actually end up returning undefined. And that's one of the few gotchas and semicolons may at some point become non-optional in JavaScript. For now, I'm using no semicolons. It's just a preference. Um, it's much safer to always use semicolons. I would never suggest doing both, uh, as this code does. So I'm going to also remove semicolons from this file as I go, but that is not uh, a big deal. So we've already removed one level of redundancy and we will move on. Uh, this particular function actually isn't bad. I'm going to remove the semicolons. But again, that is largely a matter of preference um, with the caveat that occasionally it's a bad idea. So right here, we can see that we are looking at the same DOM element twice and jQuery does do caching of DOM element lookups. Um, however, with having this code in here twice, you actually do need to check to make sure, if you're reading the code, that these are referring to the same object. So it, it is not obvious immediately that we are referring to the same jQuery object. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna pull this out into a variable and I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and use const um, most browsers most modern browsers support that now um, it's not a big deal uh, and I'm gonna preface uh, our jQuery variable with a dollar sign to indicate that it is a jQuery variable um, this may or may not be something that you want to do it's a convention that when I am using jQuery which is not often now uh, that I do just to make sure that I understand that I have a jQuery object and I, everything that I do on that object is fine to do. So this is called BS DOM add edit entry modal. Um, I'm going to call the variable modal or model and that will be that. And now these objects here can be replaced with the modal, so we know that we're looking at a modal. It's obvious this defines what the modal is. This defines what we are checking for. So right now we are looking to see that it does not have the classes show and in. So there's a modal that has these classes. If it does not have those classes, we want to remove those same classes from um, 
whatever this happens to be and right now we don't know what that is and that's it doesn't matter uh, we will probably return to this in a little bit then we do some date picker stuff and this I'm actually not gonna do anything with it's it's roughly as good as you can get the only thing that I will do is align um, these and again this this is also a preference um, and I'm actually going to alphabetize those values. So for now, I think um, we'll we'll leave this go. One thing I want to point out, um, and there there is a reason for this based on uh, what it looks like the code is doing. But some of the functions are starting with a lowercase, some are starting with an uppercase. This is not how I would prefer to do things. It is clear that this is operating on whatever that BS DOM thing is. Uh, so for now, I'm going to leave it, but what I am going to do is move this function up here. And that is so all of these BS DOM functions are grouped together, so it's clear that they all refer to the same thing. Um, I would actually also... Um, put a comment in here uh, indicating that they are grouped and I might put a, a region wrapper around them um, if your editor supports folding over regions um, I'm not going to do that for now and I'm actually going to not put this comment in for now but in real life I would recommend doing something like that so we kind of skipped ahead here uh, we'll look at confirm delete report button um, yeah, I don't know if that abbreviation is really strictly necessary. So this this kind of code is actually a little frustrating for people that have been coding for any length of time. So what we're doing is we're checking a value. We're checking to see if it's not strictly equal to true, and this matters um, uh, often. Uh, but what it means is that this is redundant because this line that returns true is redundant because we are already checking for true so we know that this value if it is uh, roughly equal to true we will turn a strictly true um, else return false so these kinds of else statements uh, I, I find frustrating so the first thing I'm going to do is actually remove that if we return here since there's no other code in this function other than the else and it wouldn't matter if there was anything else we don't really need this else statement here so that's going to go away immediately. Uh, it's 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 nonsensical. Um, it does not aid in code clarity one bit. Um, in fact, can be a little bit misleading. But since what we have here is a not strictly equal to true, we're actually looking for something truthy but we're returning a strictly equal, uh, strictly Boolean value. So what we could do is just say return of the confirm. There is a gotcha to this because it will not be returning a true false. It, it will be returning whatever confirm returns. Now, confirm actually does return true or false. Let's pretend that we didn't know that. What we would want to do is put a double negation. So this would negate it, this would negate it back to what it was, but it would also do a type coercion into a strictly true or false value. We don't need to do that in this case because confirm returns true or false. So that function went from five lines to a single line um, and eliminated some redundancy and made it easier to think about. Update upload status. Um, so we are getting a jQuery span uh, and that is going to be the upload status label and I'm going to go ahead and change that to um, use camel casing uh, for consistency I'm going to remove these. So we're passing in a message. We 
set it to the message. And I'm actually, since this is a jQuery value, I'm going to go ahead and preface it with a dollar sign. So here, the original code actually did pull out a jQuery object, um, which it did not in the previous code. So there's another inconsist inconsistency in code style. Not a big deal. Uh, I, I think consistency is actually more important than the code itself. Um, it, it makes the code easier to think about overall. Um, we're then checking the status for error. If there is an error, we are adding an error class to the success, or no, we're removing the success class and we're adding an error class. If it's not, we're removing, if it's not an error, we are removing error messages and adding success uh, classes. Uh, I said messages, I meant classes. Th this is a little wonky. Um, we'll come back to that. Checkbox error value, which is, um, uh, named with a leading uh, capital, which is inconsistent, um, probably has some problems, uh, but we'll we'll check that out real quick. So the first thing we notice here is that we are um, repeatedly building the jQuery object name, and we are repeatedly getting the uh, jQuery object itself. So the first thing I'm going to do is pull out that. Um, uh, object name. So I'm, I'm not sure what to call this, but we'll, we'll call it the um, ID value. And we're going to go ahead and pull that out. And we're going to copy that, or actually I'm just going to copy one. So we'll, we'll copy that and put it here. So that is the name uh, or the ID string of what we we're looking for. And then the, uh, I don't know what to call this, so I'm just going to call it something temporary. And this will be the jQuery value, or the jQuery object of what we just created. That means that all of these repeated entries can be replaced with id object. And I'm going to go ahead and align these. And again, aligning things like that, totally optional. Um, for me, it makes scanning things uh, a little bit easier. The problem is, when you do that, if you have some huge, long variable name here, uh, then when you align it, I think it actually looks stupid. This, this creates a problem. What I usually do in this case is um, align the ones that do match. Uh, closely in length. So this and ID value are roughly the same length, so it lines up nicely. This does not. Um, I might leave it like this. I might leave a space there. Things like this are things people love to argue about. So what we notice here is that all of this code is exactly the same uh, with, the, with the next line. The only thing that's changing is the value of the string. So what I would probably do here is move this out and change that to a single thing. And um, there are a number of ways this could be done. Um, we could do a uh, let display style here and then and just chop most of this off and then for here we would have inline and th this is not a terrible way to do it um, if you had an idea that one of them was going to be uh, more likely than the other um, it, it, if you assumed things were going to be uh, checked you might say um, you might preset the value here and then only do this particular check. Uh, for me, that's kind of six of one, half dozen of another. And I'm going to go ahead and rename this to something uh, more, more likely. So 
the name of this function is actually um, incorrect. Um, it, it, it is not describing what it does. It is checking for the number of uh, checked checkboxes and then setting a style based on um, how, how many are checked. If there's zero checked, it will be in line. If there are, are any checked, it will be um, none. So this, this is actually not a good name. Um, whether or not this is important, uh, it kind of depends on the rest of the code. This would not be what I would name this function, I'm, but I'm going to leave it for now because I don't actually know the original intent of the code. Uh, file upload complete. Uh, we have a post back comment. I don't know why we have that. I'm actually going to remove that comment. Um, this actually seems to be a, a pretty reasonable function. However, this is a bar and I would make it a const. And again, for my personal preference, the semicolons go away. Uh, I don't actually know if I did that in this function. I did. So this is a relatively uh, reasonable function. Uh, ooh, yeah. So we've got a pretty long line of code here, which I don't like. It's checking for file extensions. Um, so we have a couple different things here that we'll look at. Um, these should be const because they are not not reassigned. Uh, error should also be const. It's not reassigned. And this is something you can do pretty much across browsers now. So I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with, with using that. We have another instance where we're returning and then doing other things. Um, I, I consider that to be a code style anti-pattern. So that's going to go out. Uh, to cancel the upload, throw an error, it will fire on client upload error. I don't, I don't think we really need that. Uh, so we're creating an error, giving it a name and a message. I don't actually know what an error is in this case. I assume it's just a standard um, JavaScript error. And, and real quick, like, I will look that up. Um, this happens to be um, Dash. Uh, there are open source versions available. So we're going to look in JavaScript. Error, message, file name, line number. Um, and we are giving this message and a name. So we'll, we'll leave this as is for now because I'm not quite sure what it's supposed to be doing. We don't need parentheses there. I'm going to align this. Oh, that's awful. Um, let's fix that. Uh, once we throw an error, we don't need to return false. Uh, when you throw an error, uh, nothing else happens. So that that goes away. Um, we're going to come back to this function because it, it has some issues. Uh, BS dumb file upload error. Well, nothing wrong with that. Uh, this is calling update upload status, which we saw above. Uh, so I think this is this is short enough that it doesn't really matter. This should be a const since it's not reassigned. And actually, in this case, I think um, there's no reason to have an intermediate value for this. It's short enough that it doesn't make it significantly harder to read. Um, from our um, code highlighter, we see that the sender argument is not used. I like to preface those with a leading underscore uh, to indicate that it is not used. Um, but this, this function is, is fine. So let's go back to BS DOM file upload start. What we have here is a huge list of file extensions and I will quick like um, show you what is actually happening here. 
we were looking for a number of extensions. We'll see how many there are in a moment. There are several. So we're looking for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine file extensions. And already we can see a potential problem. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have a misleading message. Um, we have XLS, XLSX, so Excel spreadsheets, PDF. Um, here we're checking for XML, but we don't have XML in here. So I'm gonna add XML in here. And this is one reason why code like this is awful. Um, it's difficult to maintain this list of file names when it's deeply embedded in the code, especially when it's in a, a line that's uh, uh, over 100 characters long. I think it was 128 or something. I don't know, whatever. So we definitely don't want something like this. We want this message and this list of files to come from something else. So for that, we would create a new function, um, validate or is file extension valid. And we'll give it a file extension parameter. And right now, we're just gonna copy this code to here. And since we are just doing a bunch of logical conditions, this is all we need to do uh, to make this correct. Forgot the. There we go. So we have we have two things that we need to be doing here. We first need to check to see if the file extension is valid. all of that code. So now we have an easy way to test if a file extension matches our list of things. But we also have this list of file extensions that are OK. So what we really need to do is check um, this array. But we need to reference it later in order to build our error message. So what I'm going to do is create a constant called valid file exts, which is not how I would normally do this, but it's it's fine. Um, there's no reason not to just spell that out. And this is going to be just the same list of file extensions that we have here. And what we're going to do is remove all these and indent properly. And then we're going to remove all of these. And oh, I just saved it as the same file name, which is a mistake. We'll put in some commas here. OK, so we have a couple different things now that we can do. Um, I'm actually going to uh, create another variable, um, and this is this is not strictly necessary, but just for the sake of discussion, we'll do this. Um, uh, we'll call this message, and we're just going to do this join. Um, Another nice argument you can have is whether or not you should use single or double quotes for strings. I actually use single quotes for JavaScript strings um, uh, primarily because in JSX I use double quotes inside JSX uh, components or React components. Uh, and this is just a, a, an easy way to differentiate. But that is not helpful. So now this function here now it just needs to look to see whether or not um, 
uh, our file extension is contained in this list. And I don't actually remember how to do that in JavaScript. Uh, I don't know if there's a string. No. What about um, uh, filter? Is going to return us a list where um, we have all of the things. It's still not what I'm looking for, but I don't remember what it is I'm looking for. Um, I can't. I can't remember. So we will go to the interwebs because that's how we code these days. Uh, and I want JavaScript. See if um, item contain exists in array in Stack Overflow, our favorite place. Uh, there's a contains blah 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 index of okay we'll we'll use index of for now there are, are more elegant method methods perhaps but um, uh, so we have our valid file extensions index of file extension greater than negative one and actually we can just return that. And I'm not actually checking this code. Uh, I'm, I'm not testing it. There may be some um, minor errors. Um, so if, if so, I apologize. But now what we can also do is we're gonna go ahead and use a, a string interpolation string. Uh, if your browser doesn't support that, you can, you can do it the old school way. And I think that's about all of what we need from this. There's probably a method to get the file extension of this uh, of this file name, uh, especially if you're including some other typical libraries. Uh, but this is fine for now. And I think that is all I will do. The, the other thing that I would probably do is create a custom um, error. It looks as though, since they're using name and message, um, it's not just a standard error. Uh, let's, let's go back real quick and, and look at this. So we have error, and this is just a message file name. Um, yeah, I think... I think I would probably create a, uh, a standard error for this, um, an application specific error, since it is using a non-standard field in that error. I think it would make sense to have a new new actual error type. Um, for now, it doesn't matter. Uh, what I would say, however, is that since um, Since we're we're doing something a little bit off off JavaScript spec, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do this. Oh, there, I used single quotes out of habit, and then for this one. Yeah, I think that's good. And then what we'll do here is put this in here, return error. And I think that's all we need to do there. So I think what we have ended up with here is a, is a pretty, pretty decent uh, first stab at refactoring. We've created some new methods that are easy to test. We've created a way you can add and remove file extensions without messing up the rest of your code, um, which is one of the biggest issues I had with this in the first place. We've removed some redundancies. Um, in terms of, uh, one, one thing that people always ask is, um, I don't know how to expand everything. Uh, 
uh, one thing people always say is, uh, do you end up with more code or less code? And that really depends on the code that you have refactored. So we'll do, we'll do a quick check. Um, but I, I want to point out that the point of refactoring is not to reduce the amount of code. The point of refactoring is to make code easier to think about and reason about and maintain and extend. Um, it's not simply about saving lines of code because that is never the metric that is important. Um, so the original code had 82 lines-ish. The new code has 105 lines. So we've added um, a fair amount of, of lines of code, although I would say that um, since here we've, we've done uh, this kind of thing, uh, we're adding artificial lines of code because it's not actually that long. It's just easier to read. So if we take out some of that uh, fluff code, uh, here we're down to 96. If we use some of the original spacing um, things, we're, now we've added 10 lines of code. To me, not a big issue. Um, oh, we have we have a. I'm not sure what I've done here. And yeah, maybe I just didn't work on that function. Um, so here here again, uh, and I'm I'm not sure how I managed to skip skip over this function. Um, validate BS DOM check check pixel. That is a character savings that is not valid. Um, not not a real concern. Um, we have the same um, issue here where here we're not repeating it, but I'm gonna pull it out anyway. Um, and again we're looking for um, ID value and I think in this case I'm just gonna leave this in here I'm not gonna pull out that jQuery object and again we're, we're setting a, a value um, to this value here so we could do something like this um, to me that's actually a little bit harder to read than it was before um, for now, I'll, I'll just leave it like this, and we'll we'll call it a day. So, I think I think that's uh, all I would do with this as a as a first pass. Um, we've added eight-ish lines of code. If we put all this on one line, which I wouldn't do, um, but just to show that line line counts aren't the thing that make a function readable it's how it's organized and and laid out that is what actually matters um i think this is a a, a better file than we had before there are some things in here that are not terribly testable um but we have extracted all of this out which means uh, we can change this list uh, we've removed some redundancies We've taken out some unnecessary else statements that are just confusing, and I, I think we've ended up with some better code. So that was it. Um, I hope this was somewhat instructive. Uh, I have found that refactoring is somewhat of a, of a black art for some people. They don't understand why. They don't understand um, what should be refactored and how things should look at the end. The caveat to that is that this is how I think code should look. It may not be how you think code should look, and that's perfectly fine. There are refactorings in here that were small, like renaming variables um, with a dollar sign in front. Uh, if that's not your convention, that's fine. Um, early returns are something people love to argue about. Uh, an example of an early return is this. Uh, a lot of people think a function should have a single return point. I don't agree with that. Uh, if a function is small enough, short enough, and easy enough to reason about, uh, I think an early return can actually make things easier to understand because you know that if you are on this particular path, you do not have to look at any more of the code. 
um, if you were setting a status value and returning that at the end of the function, you would have to read the entire rest of the function in order to understand what this function does. In this particular case, you do not because it's, it's all right here. Um, you hit this point, you know you don't have to care anymore. Uh, if you're not on that path, obviously you have to read the rest of the function, but you would need to do that anyway. So sometimes refactorings are six of one, half dozen of another. Uh, when I refactor, my goal is to make thinking about the flow of the code, uh, particularly the mainline code, as easy as possible. Um, things like this, uh, not a big fan. Um, I, th I think it's hard to figure out what's happening. Uh, number one, it's just a long line. Um, so, of course, you could do something like this which uh, I think makes it a little bit clearer what's happening. Um, again, this is a matter of opinion, but what we, what we do have are, uh, again, repeated chunks of code. The only thing that's changing is in one instance, in one case, you are adding the class, in one case, you're removing the class. So there's some, um, I, I won't say toggles, um, uh, although it is somewhat of a, of a toggle. Uh, so things like this, uh, probably good to refactor out into something you could use across the entire application if this is a pattern that's used elsewhere. Um, not, not something that, that I would ping in a code review, but something to keep in mind. So I think that's all. Um, uh, again, hopefully it was informative. Um, Refactoring is something that I talk about a lot. It is one of the things I have spent the most time mentoring newer developers on. Uh, it, is, it is critically important to have code that you can understand. At the same time, it is important to have that code be understandable by others. So little tricks um, or trying to cram things onto a single line, almost never a good idea because someone else may have to maintain that code someday. In fact, you may have to maintain that code someday, and that someday might not be tomorrow. If it's not tomorrow, you may forget what the code is actually doing. So write code as though you will forget it immediately after writing it, or that uh, whoever is coming next to the code knows where you live and is heavily armed and will not take kindly to tricky code or code that's impossible to think about.